Joining us right now to talk all about it is former Michigan Congressman, former Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Pete Huckstra. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, good morning. So what do you make of this new, new tone and conversation about this aggressive timeline? First next week, we could see actually a, ha a bill out of the House on health care, and we know that the president has said once health care is complete, they're all in on tax reform. Do you believe it? Uh, I don't know whether they'll pass the legislation or not, but I'm not at all surprised that you're starting to see this aggressive tone coming out of the Trump administration on a timeline. The only thing that I'm surprised about uh, is that it took so long. Donald Trump's a business guy. He wants to get things done. And, you know, I'm surprised that two weeks ago he didn't call on Congress to cancel their recess, stay in Washington uh, to work on these issues, to get them done, to get the government funded, to do tax reform. Uh, so the, the only surprise to me is it took so long. Yeah. And I think this is now going to be the tone for the next three to six months. And a lot of people criticize that they went on vacation, right, Dagan? I mean, you saw the Twitter feed and you were saying what viewers were saying. Uh, that would be a, a positive surprise if they actually came back and said, we're back, day one, boom, here's the bill. And House Speaker Paul Ryan was overseas was, with, yeah. with other colleagues dealing with NATO issues. It's a separate story. But it does seem to be the White House putting pressure on the Republicans and Congress to get a vote next week, and it just seems so unlikely. They don't reconvene until Tuesday. It gives them essentially one day to whip votes when there's no legislative text in place for certainly a health care repeal and replace. So it doesn't seem likely. And but it goes back to what Lee's been talking about. You have the White House versus the, the, Geo, the Republicans in Congress. There's a problem with messaging here. Mm. And President Trump uses Twitter very effectively, but they need to have kind of a central communications plan coming out of the White House. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, they, they, they need to have a central talking point so that we all understand what it is that's going to happen. If we have an election next week, people are going to have no idea what, what's even being voted on, and it's going to be just as bad as when Nancy Pelosi said, I'm looking forward to reading it after I vote, you know, after I vote for it. And so, I, I, I mean, my question is, do you think that it's at all realistic to think that next week this is going to happen? Congressman? The, um, uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's going to be difficult. I think the points that you're making are exactly right. This is the problem that they've had with health care all along. They're, ta they're talking about health care reform, but those of us that are no longer in the process that are watching saying, what, what is it? Why, how's it going to benefit me and my family? How's it going to lower my rates? How's it going to give me access to my doctor? They have not done a very good job of articulating what is in the health care plan and why it's good for America and why it's better than what it's replacing. Yeah, and why, and why the Freedom Caucus was against that, that first bill. I mean, you know, what it is that they want to see changed. Meanwhile, here's this, Congressman. The University of Alaska refusing to remove a graphic, uh, a painting of a decapitated President Trump. This is incredible. The painting shows a nude Chris Evans, the actor who stars as Marvel's Captain America, holding the president's severed head. A young Hillary Clinton clings to Evans' legs. What's your reaction to this graphic? Uh, it's, it's despicable. It is. Uh, it's disappointing. Uh, it shows a total lack of, of disrespect, not only for Donald Trump, but for the office of the president and for, you know, for our government. And at the same time, you've got universities going out uh, and refusing the right for conservative speakers to speak on campus. Uh, what's happening on our campuses right now is just, uh, it's disappointing for, for all Americans, and, and it's, it's absolutely outrageous. I'm surprised that the University of Alaska will not remove the graphic, aren't you? Uh, yeah, it, it's awful. That 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 a graphic like that That's has right. no place uh, in any in any location for public display. Do you think Chris Evans okayed that? I mean, no. <laughs> no. They're, they're, just, they're putting Chris Evans in a, in a very awkward political spot. Yeah. awkward spot. Yeah. Well, he should say something. Yeah. Exactly. Quite frankly, this is not okay. Right. No. Well, I mean, the thing your that point I about find messaging, it, he should get that message out that he no, as fast perfect. as he can. And yeah. the thing that I find absolutely astounding right now is. We're so sensitive to racism, bigotry, all of these things, and yet we can have this kind of an image where we can be this discriminatory towards conservatives and Republicans, and that's okay. If it were President Obama, it would be taken down immediately. Immediately. Yeah. I mean, just last week, or this, this week, rather, earlier this week, there was a, a terrorism analyst on MSNBC who basically said, I would like ISIS to attack uh, President Trump's property in Istanbul. 
So again, it's just it's no problem when it's said about the the sitting president well, and it, yet if it was president obama if it was president it would obama be wildly racist that's if it right. was hillary clinton it would be wildly sexist it is and outrageous evil and despicable it's despicable how about this Con president trump invited some well let's call them rock and guests to the white house congressman <laughs> uh, michigan airs uh, ted nugent and kid rock dined with president trump and former alaska governor sarah palin take a look at these pictures but in a facebook a facebook post palin and thanked the president and shared photos of the visit. Uh, you're, a, you're a Michigan Durr, yourself. What do you make of this meeting, sir? Hey, it's, it's one of the reasons Michigan is always called a great state. Uh, we've got great people here. Uh, Kid Rock and uh, Ted Nugent, they've been involved in politics for uh, an extended period of time. They're, they're very interested. They're very knowledgeable. And uh, I'm glad that Donald Trump is talking to them. I, you know, during the campaign, Ted Nugent was in Michigan. Uh, you know, he was out, we were together at a lot of the rallies. Uh, we talked after the election. Uh, Ted had a lot of suggestions in terms of, you know, to help Donald Trump and to help our governor to bring Michigan back and get us on a road to recovery. Uh, who knows? You may see one of these uh, one of these folks running for running for the U.S. Senate. That would be a very very interesting and exciting race. Mm. All right, but some of those pictures were goofy. They're goofy, and this it, it, this I is mean, what we're going to talk about all day long. Instead of the messaging being on point, coming out of the White House about what they're doing for every American, <laughs> not the ones who get to visit. Right. That's my only issue. And by the way. Why, can you take your hats off when you're in the Oval Office? <laughs> I, I'm not joking. Yeah. Take your hat off. Yeah. Any man knows I, that. I, and I think it's worse than goofy. I really don't appreciate them making a joke standing underneath Hillary Clinton. She ran a, you know, she was one of the first, she was the first yeah. female candidate for president. Yeah. Let's show her some respect. I mean, she lost, but yeah. I, I don't think that's appropriate. That was, that was what but I that's was talking the, about. That, that's what the, what the New York Times is writing about yeah. today. I know. Yeah. Instead of here. <laughs> They're all, the White House being on message. The White House pushing a pro-growth economic agenda. I mean, That's what we're talking about. Today. Final word, Pete Hextra. Hey, great. It's, uh, it's an all-Michigan day. You throw in Jim Harbaugh. Keep focusing on Michigan. We've got an economy that's coming back. <laughs> Move to Michigan. It's a great place. <laughs> All right. All right. Talk about All messaging. Right. Yeah, that's a message. <laughs> Congressman, thank you, sir. Good to see you. Pete Hextra. Always good there. to be with you. Thank you. <laughs>